We are live. Good to see you today, my EOS podcast friends. This is the EOS podcast by EOS Writer. And if you haven't heard of EOS Writer Media yet, uh, it is somewhere that is becoming quickly a go-to media source for quick, timely, and quality information about everything that's going on in EOS. So welcome to the EOS podcast, Peter, and go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, Brendan, thank you for having me onto the show. Um, this is my first time onto like a video podcast with the US community. I'm super excited and thanks again for having me. Uh, hi, everyone. So my name is Peter. I'm the founder of Moran. And Moran, we are a management consulting firm based in China. Uh, we help promote uh, crypto projects and especially EOS projects. And we are very much into the EOS community. So it's very good to be here and talking to uh, to you guys, the yeah. US crowd. Well, it's fantastic to have you on the show. Um, we are going to talk about Moran and EOS Writer, and there's a media partnership that's going on there. We're going to talk about um, the uh, a decentralized worldwide coupon system called Real World Coupon. That's an idea that uh, a lot of these people are pushing, uh, a lot of your team's pushing forward. And we're going to talk about what's most interesting in EOS. we got all this time sorts of stuff coming up. Let's start um, with general EOS. What do you think the most interesting thing going on in EOS right now is, Peter? Yeah, I think um, everyone is like super excited about what was announced on June 1st. And especially, um, I think so many things happened on June 1st. I think two main points I'd like to touch on. Obviously, like the 12x boost to the network speed that is super exciting. And also that on the voice platform, even though it's been announced, but there's a lot of the details that's still not available yet. I think what we know so far is that it's going to be, it, it will have like a KYC system. So I think this will lay a very good foundation for the EOS ecosystem because I think currently uh, people can get multiple accounts and with multiple accounts, um, people can get multiple airdrops and that's not really fair because um, yeah, I think people are just getting too many tokens and if they want to. Uh, okay, so, so you, think that you think people are getting like hundreds or even thousands of accounts and just basically hoarding airdrops or, or spamming airdrops? I think so, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I think definitely it's a concern uh, within the Chinese community. And I do know that people do keep track of like a great list. So when they perform airdrop, they would try to avoid those uh, questionable accounts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard of air And there's also some airdrops, I think, that uh, have a cutoff for, you know, a certain amount of EOS. They'll say only EOS that have, or only accounts that have 100 EOS or 1,000 EOS or something like that. But, uh, you know, the unfortunate part about that is that leaves a lot of people out of the ecosystem if they don't have, you know, a, lot, a decent amount of EOS, so. Yeah, um, and also that, Oftentimes, the airdrop rules will be announced beforehand. So, oh. you know, if the requirement is like 100 EOS and if I have 1,000, I'll spread across like 10 accounts with like 100 each and I can, all these 10 accounts can qualify for airdrops. And that is still like kind of gaming the system when the airdrop is mostly intended for like one airdrop per person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think one of the biggest shifts that this KYC type of blockchain, or let's call it one user, one account, it, it brings in the a lot of possibilities with the token economics, where all of a sudden a lot of the problems with Steemit can be addressed if you have one person, one account. Um, you know, you're talking about these upvotes, and I believe that the if you write an article and it gets a certain amount of up votes, the amount of upvotes you get is part of the algorithm to how much you're going to get paid, let's say, along with, you know, the voicing money that goes in the comments. But uh, in Steemit, what you could do is you could basically trade upvotes uh, because it was weighted by the amount. So there'd be these upvote trading cartels. So it wasn't sorting out the, um, the best content. But, uh, but each account is basically going to be worth the same for upvotes. So, you know, a trading cartel with you and 10 other people isn't going to make a ton of sense because all of you are going to have the same weight. It's not going to be, you know, you need, you're going to need thousands of upvotes and you're not going to be able to just trade upvote for upvote and get thousands. Um, so that's one of the areas that I, I like the incentives kind of being aligned better with this 
one user, one account model, if that makes yeah, sense. I think, <laughs> yeah, I think um, that is definitely a very good idea because many platforms are dominated by early adopters or big token holders. And in the end, with those platforms, it just big holders are controlling the platform and re it really uh, pushes smaller players out. And I think that is very unfortunate. So it's really exciting to hear what voice uh, has on their ideas. And we're like super excited to, to really see the details very soon. I think also the people working on the platform is really wanting to get everything right. So they're not rushing to get the details out. So yeah, they're being... <clears throat> They're holding some of the tokenomics close to the vest for sure. I know I, uh, when I talked to, I interviewed Dan and Brendan and I asked them kind of some specifics about the tokenomics and they said they haven't released that yet. So like you said, either they're still tweaking it. I would imagine they're tweaking it and playing with it as opposed to not, you know, don't know yet. I'm, I'm sure they have a lot of ideas about how it's going to work, but they're kind of trying to finalize those right now before they spill all the beans. But, um, yeah, it'll be interesting. What What's the reception like for voice in the Chinese community? Um, so it's really interesting because even though not much has announced yet, but we see, say, a lot of the WeChat groups are being formed. They're like, oh, oh. this is like voice WeChat group. So people are like filling in people into those chat mm -hmm. groups. So we see multiple chat groups being ready to, to talk about voice. So Definitely everyone's like super excited and because, you know, there's a lot of a uh, huge fan base for Dan Larimer. So whatever he's involved in, like Chinese people are like going to go crazy over it. Yeah. So this is like the next big thing. So everyone's super excited in China about voice. Yeah. Um, and what are you, what are you personally most excited for about voice? Like what, what, what do you plan on doing on the platform? How are you going to use it? Um, I think, um, so far, uh, I don't have much detail, but I think this would be one of the first uh, EOS steps to really get mass adoption. And what I'm really excited about is, you know, having really more people coming on board. And I think that's, that's why they're increasing the network speed by 12x, because they're anticipating like, much more people coming in. And once people get in, uh, starting with voice, and then they can look around and say, Oh, they're like more dApps on EOS that are like super good. Like, you know, maybe like Eminent and people can like try it out. So I think what is really exciting is that with voice, we bring more people into the community. And once people are in, like once they go through the KYC process and other dApps can leverage that KYC process as well. And it will bring more users to other EOS dApps as well. I think that's like the most exciting part. Because yeah, I think, really, yeah, 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 it really gives a tool. It gives a, an, an, another really big tool in the tool belt for DAP developers where they can say this is a one person, one account type of, you know, we can verify this is a legit account. And then all of a sudden the things that you can do with that are, are, are much different. Um, so, it, yeah, it'll be really cool. Yeah, um, it's really ex exciting to, to see uh, what Block One has implemented with their KYC process because from, from what we heard so far, uh, it's going to be by a like a country by country basis so based on like what is required uh by with a local law they'll have different uh kyc implemented but what we also heard that it's that um the kyc process is going to be very smooth so i think what <clears throat> block one is doing with kyc is super super serious compared to you know other some smaller exchange or other dApps like the kyc process may be more lenient so having like a really strict and formal KYC process, that is, I think, very, very valuable for the community. Yeah. And, and they, they, they're in Washington, D.C. talking to the, you know, talking to the government. They're in, you know, having meetings and things like that. And they're, they're hinting that, well, they're not hinting. Dan's saying that they are expecting and hoping for the U.S. citizens to be able to have tokens and to utilize tokens. Because right now, U.S. citizens you know, aren't going to be allowed to earn tokens using voice, which will massively hurt the, the Western adoption. Um, so, you know, that'd, that'd be a big setback, I think, for them if they don't get the U.S. residents able to use tokens. So, um, yeah, hopefully they are working on that in D.C.
Yeah. And you mentioned, uh, you mentioned emanate. Um, well, what do you, I've had emanate actually on the, on the podcast once or possibly twice. Um, how familiar are you with the emanate project? Um, my team Moran, uh, worked very closely with eminent. Uh, we helped them establish presence in China and we're seeking, uh, partnerships with uh, musicians in the music industry for eminent. But right now, um, uh, we're, we're um, standing by um, to wait for the Alpha platform launch. And we're very excited about that because what Eminent is trying to do, I think it can really help um, the music industry to move forward and give like a bigger chunk of the pie to the creators other than like the existing you know, distributors. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, what I like about M&A, I, I do a, uh, what's called a DAP showcase it, in San Francisco and then in Santa Cruz also. It's actually been one of my most successful meetups because uh, we actually are just getting on our cell phones or laptops and showing people all these DAPs and how to use them and getting people set up on wallets and getting people to use functioning DAPs on, on blockchain. But Emanate is one of the most fun ones to demo because, uh, you know, we're, we're casting it up onto a screen and then we're putting, you know, emanate up and then we're playing music for everyone. And then you're, you're seeing it register on the blockchain. So, um, you know, that's one of the, that's always one of the hits when we start demoing emanate. Um, so what do you mean by their alpha version they have, they have coming out? I guess I, we were probably using, we've been using the beta. Um, what's the alpha going to be? Oh, I think what we have right now, uh, is the demo. Uh, so when you run the demo, uh, those tokens are not real, uh-huh. but it just shows that, oh, it works on the blockchain. So I think the alpha version is like the MVP. Uh, so there's more functions down the road, uh, which are not available yet, but the alpha version is, I think it, they will be implementing like instant payment uh, to, to the artists when users uh, stream music. So that is definitely super exciting because from, from what I heard, uh, musicians sometimes get paid like once a month or once a quarter. So mm-hmm. this will really change the game. It's like what Eminem was saying, like it's like street performance. That's where you get instant pay. But with street performance, you have like very limited audience. And this is like doing online street performance where you get instant pay and you have the, the entire world to be your crowd. Yeah, <clears throat> that 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 idea of leverage is is something that's really cool. Uh, with the internet, we're now able to leverage our influence of globally. And so, you know, whereas in the past, if you were going to like speak at a conference, you're talking to a hundred or thousand people at once, and that's kind of the extent of your reach. But with um, you know, with leveraging the internet, all of a sudden you can reach the entire globe. And blockchain adds such an interesting twist because now you can with that leverage you can also leverage like you're saying getting paid like you're getting peer-to-peer paid but leveraged globally you can be a busker on the streets of santa cruz but uh you know send that out to the entire world and have them pay you it's pretty that's that's quite a thought man it's it's a a a big shift emanates bringing us into here for sure yeah i think what one thing eminent that is doing differently is that a lot of the blockchain projects, they try to cut off the middleman to try to, you know, increase efficiencies. But when you do that, you're, you're just challenging the status quo and you're making the middleman your enemy, right? Because like, you're like trying to get rid of them. So they won't, they won't like you by default. But in Eminem's case, um, they're not cutting out anyone. And they're also trying to work with like music labels and also individual artists. So I think, Eminem is trying to be, be friends with the entire, the, the existing ecosystem and by making it more efficient and everyone can be more happier. So that's, that's like a unique thing that they're trying to not cutting people out of the ecosystem. Yeah, it sounds like it's just kind of making that system more efficient. So everyone gets paid faster and more straightforward. You know, they can still have their promoters, they can still have their manager and all these people getting paid, but uh, it's happening instantly. You know, I guess it's still cutting out probably like some bookkeepers or, or something like that. But uh, yeah, but but kind of those that fluff in the middle that slows things down, it, it's cutting out. And so, yeah, that's pretty cool. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. And also, yeah, hopefully I'm not talking too much about it, but I'm like super oh, excited. That's, that's another thing that, about. One of another highlight is that 
you know, a lot of times, um, like people like us, we're just like consumers of music. So we were like buy music and we listen to it and we, we enjoy music. But with Eminent, the promising that for us, for for us listeners, whoever creates like you know a playlist that becomes popular, then people can earn through the playlist that they create. So I think that can be a very interesting thing wow. to and we'll wait to see how that plays out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I know there. What's this? Uh... I listen on on Spotify, and I think it's called uh, oh, uh, Rap Caviar. <laughs> there's this there's this channel called Rap Caviar, and and it just started out, I think, as a curated playlist that this guy made, uh, just of the best rap music. And it may have been bought. I think that Spotify ended up buying his channel because it was so popular. But you know, it's got like you know something like thirty million people follow this this channel but um but yeah that's a great example like this happens already but not not fluidly it ha it's kind of one off when it happens but uh but yeah the the chance to curate a, a playlist is is great for sure yeah yeah so what else what else are you working on i mean you've got all kinds of projects going on um outside of uh moran uh what what else are you working on yeah um so i'm coming here one of the purpose I'm here today is uh, we're announcing um, the partnership between Moran and EOS Rider. And you, as a team member of EOS Rider, uh, you, you already know EOS Rider has been really popular and increasingly popular very rapidly. It's, it's being like, pinned by Brendan Boomer on his Twitter account. And there's a lot more viewership. So we think that EOS Rider is doing an amazing job with the English speaking community. And Moran, uh, we're, we're offering um, to help EOS Rider to build up the Chinese uh, presence in the Chinese community. So uh, we will be launching on the Chinese site for EOS Rider, and it should be online when we um, publish uh, this video. So hopefully uh, everyone can go check out the new EOS Rider Chinese site, uh, and we're very super happy. We're super excited with this partnership. I think we should just really bridge the gap between the Eastern community and the Western community because a lot of the people in China, they see all these gambling dabs and they're unaware of what's happening outside. They're, they're not known about like EVA, the ride sharing project and a lot of what's happening in like the US and Europe, uh, they don't know about. And I think it's the same thing go with the US, they might not, know what's happening in the Chinese community. So I think having this EOS focused uh, media site doing both Chinese and English and both our team will have original content and will publish in dual languages. I think this can really bridge like the community gap inside the EOS community. Yeah, I think that's, that is really big. I was just at the uh, Tulip conference and we had the block producer summit, which was basically the one year anniversary of launching the chain in San Francisco. And, um, a lot of the Chinese community came out. Um, I know boss was there, uh, token pocket, uh, uh boy, um, hello EOS. Hello EOS. Yeah. And, and, a, a, just a great contingent of the Chinese community and they had some presentations and got to talk about what EOS means in China. And it was, really eye-opening it's like oh my gosh they they uh you know love this as much as we do and not only is china love it more as much as we do uh they have a, a what looks like a much larger contingent of people working on it which to to me was surprising i thought it was like a little bit more equal but um you know seeing how much is going on in china is just was eye-opening so we are in the dark and and that's coming from the eos podcast the first podcast in EOS history. <laughs> uh, a little plug for the EOS podcast there. But yeah, I mean, I've done over a hundred shows now, been over a wow. year in this and still didn't know how much was going on in China, you know, which is, which is crazy that there, that, you know, that I didn't have a good grasp on it. So I know most people probably with a little that aren't doing this full time, don't know all the projects and how much is really going on. So this bridge, this media bridge and getting to hear from Moran, everything that's happening um, and 
getting to push some of the stuff that's happened in the U S over to China. It, it, I think it's huge. You know, this is just kind of the next evolution in, in, in this global community is having a little bit more transparent communication between the, you know, both the two sides of the globe. Yeah. Yeah. Totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. And I really think that, you know, EOS writer has been doing so, so many great things and, it's really about time that they add a new language and that's how like the serious media sites are like they have like multiple languages and like a huge team running it so we're trying to build out eos writer to be the dominant um, media site for eos yeah and eos writer got so much traction recently it just became i've been saying it's become kind of the go to source for information as far as like what's going on in eos because eos writer has a whole team of people they're throwing uh together really quality articles kind of as they happen so it's this it's one of the first examples of a professional media team that is has a whole team of people putting out articles um, you know, it's, it's one of the first examples that kind of being done really well. Um, it's not just like aggregating articles. It's actually pushing out content on a really timely basis. Um, and, and that's going to be needed more and more because there, there's so much going on. Like it helps when someone is uh, kind of consolidating that so you can find it in one spot. You know, not everyone has time to go research on YouTube or listen to an hour and a half long podcast or, you know, uh, everyone's got different levels of engagement. So the EOS writer is um, really addressing that. What's, what's Moran, how, what's the media look like uh, on Moran's end? I, I'm not real familiar with, uh, with what, what that's doing. Is it comparable to EOS writer? Uh, so, um, so Moran, our, our team, we don't have a, like a very technical person to build out our site. So what we have been doing up till like, end of April is that we have like this one account on WeChat and we would, so when you have like an account on WeChat, you can do one post per day or two posts max. So, so there's not like this unlimited articles you can write every day. So we would usually do, it's like an evening news. We would gather all the news for that day and just do one big post. And we would also, um, repost this same article onto several media sites and also including like like one of the more popular um crypto community in china called bihu we would also post there so it's really good that i like to mention that um it's really interesting or i'm like super excited to work with yas writer because unlike the traditional media team where you know everyone comes into work in one office space the EOS writer is more of a open structure, like the founder Kenny is in Australia, right? And you have, we have like Dimitri in the US and you also in the US and we have this uh, girl, Katie, helping out from Russia and we are helping out from China. So I really like the idea of a decentralized team applying like working in this blockchain field because I think this is what blockchain is about. It's about, you know, keeping the door open and let whoever wants to help out, like come in and participate. And EOS Rider is doing that. Yeah. And I think EOS Rider got a huge boost because, you know, the traditional industry really misunderstood what EOS is. So, you know, when we see like reports by, you know, Bloomberg and other media sites that are not very fair. And then we see like the same article coverage from EOS writer and so much well written. And that really shows that, you know, it's really, I think things are just in very early phase. So it's really up to the insiders inside crypto or in, inside EOS community to write what is actually right. And I think EOS writer is doing a good job. So, so yeah. Um, yeah, and, th and that that is like the big, that is the big um, kind of elephant in the room is this, all this kind of 24 hour news cycle and everyone just wants clickbait and just get clicks and get someone to read, just read your article a little bit so that you get the advertising. So it's gone away from real quality reporting. And so that is the hope, you know, the kind of, that's the North star of, of EOS writers to bring actual information 
uh, you know, that's what I try to do on this podcast. That's why it's just people talking is because, uh, you know, I want people to know what's really going on. And that's why we don't, <laughs> we, you know, I've never, never don't edit the podcast or anything. It's just like, this is uh, what people in the EOS community think. And, that, and I think that's what the EOS writer represents and what Moran is doing. So um, yeah, big. And, and that's why it got the attention of Brendan Bloomer. I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't just, uh, you know, back media sources um, willy nilly. He, you know, he picked EOS writer because, because they're doing quality stuff. So um, yeah, we'll keep, keep moving that forward. Um, what, uh, what else is going on? I know that you've got, um, real world coupon. Can you tell a little bit about that and, and where you guys are at, what you're doing? Yeah, sure. Um, so Moran has helped several clients in the EOS space, including say QuailX, Pixios, Eminent, and um, SenseChat. And along the way, we help, our, we help all these projects. We started brainstorming what can we do to help achieve you know, mass adoption and just to create something that the world wants to use. And um, so I started thinking about this um, towards the end of last year, and I come up with this idea that, well, um, people in the crypto community, we are so familiar with staking and tokens, but you know, uh, the general public might not know what staking is. If you, if you say like, oh, if you can stake US dollar and you can have this car, if you stake, like a million dollars, you can live in this house. It, like this kind of seems very foreign, right? So I wonder what kind of project that it's already accepted by the general public. So I was like brainstorming a lot and I, I ended up with the coupon, right? Because um, coupons being used every day by everyone. So I thought this is like a good starting point. And I really want to avoid the staking concept. I want to make this token called coupon and really have people just have to use it like a like a digital coupon right just run some blockchain but you know it's being stored in the wallet but when you use it you just like transfer it to the store so that's that's something that i started thinking and i think this can be really good because the concept is already familiar right by everyone and one I, I don't want to just you know just make something exactly the same, but with blockchain on it. I want to really leverage the power of blockchain. So real world coupon is kind of like coupon, but on steroids, like it's like an upgraded version. Because if you think about coupon, traditional coupons, like if you have like a Starbucks coupon, you cannot use it anywhere else, right? It just, you just have to go to Starbucks and usually it has like an expiration date, right? You have to use it by end of this month or it expires. So our coupon is uh, works completely different in this in the sense we have one coupon that can be used at multiple places, right? So we we keep expanding um, the use case scenario. So right now we have twelve use cases already. So all all these use uh, coupons can it's the same coupon and it can be used at twelve places right now. But we try to uh, keep adding. Um, New use cases to it, and once uh, the coupon is used, right? So that if the merchant accepts a coupon, they take me in. Uh, in the old scenario, the the merchant will have to proceed to destroy the coupon because the coupon has served its purpose. It brought in the customer and bring the sales. The coupon's done. But in this case, once the merchant receives a coupon, the coupon is still usable at ten other places, right? So the, the merchant can proceed to, to reuse the coupon. So that so in this uh, so our coupon is infinitely reusable. And say in the case that you're not interested in using it, you can still go to the exchange and sell it for other tokens. So that's uh, like a big plus of what we're trying to create. So, so it's like an operative. Would you consider these two coupons? Are they? You plan on having them be NFTs or SFTs? Um, is mm. oh no, no, it's not NFTs. Uh, it's very generic, just a token. Okay. And we'll, we'll provide like a use case list so people will know uh, where it can be used. So another thing is that another problem that we try to solve is that most uh, tokens are only usable on one platform, right? So if you say, for example, if you have Karma token, right? It's, it's on Karma platform and 
the, the, the token is mostly unusable outside of Karma platform. And you can obviously trade it for something else, but that's it. But so I really want to change that because it feels very limited if you have this amazing coupon, but it's only usable here and nowhere else, right? So we want to change that. And with this coupon uh, system, like we have this one coupon and you can use it everywhere that is that offers a use case. So it's not NFT, it's just like a generic uh, coupon. Or and, token. and it sounds like this is for you're planning to do this for like the crypto community. So if someone wanted to advertise on the EOS podcast, they'd send me, uh, would they send me one coupon token or would they send me, you know, a hundred coupon tokens? How's that work? Yeah. So for the first batch of partners, a lot of the use cases are uh, for crypto projects. Uh, so for example, um, meet one is a partner. Um, Meet One is a wallet and they have ad vendors in the wallet and they do charge uh, for, for projects who put in ads inside the wallet. So the, we um, so with this coupon uh, that we call RWC, so when you use, when, um, so the use case would be, you would, Meet One can offer you 10% off if you give them 1,000 RWC coupons. Okay. Right. <clears throat> And there is like an upper limit on how much um, discount you can get. With every 1,000 RWC coupon, you can get up to 100 EOS discount. Okay, okay. Yeah, so, so most of the first batch of partners, um, the use case is almost on 10% off with 1,000 RWC coupons with a maximum 100 EOS deduction. And we are very proud to say that um, we have offline use case as well because we really want to, you know, get more people, users coming in. So we are partnering with like a, a cake shop in Hangzhou and they are like a really high-end cake shop and their corporate client includes Alibaba Inc. Oh, wow. So it's, yeah, so, yeah. So for that use case, it's, it's uh, give, if you get uh, 10 RWC coupons, you get 10% off on in-store purchases. Okay, okay. Well, I need to travel out to China and, and buy some cake, it sounds like. <laughs> I've got a 10% well, off. Or hopefully we'll, we'll just partner with a store next to you so you don't have to come <laughs> all the way to China. You just yeah, go next better, door and use it. <laughs> yeah, that's a better plan for sure. You know, um, it, it, the, the use of coupons is, 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 you see it everywhere. I mean, you see things like Groupon, and, th and things like that. What would you say would be kind of the, the difference between uh, this and Groupon? What, what, what's like kind of the unique selling point? Yeah, I think with Groupon, I, I used it before. So you had to buy this Groupon or that Groupon. And it's not interchangeable, right? This Groupon can only be used at this place, right? And so if you have like a Starbucks Groupon, you use that Starbucks, you cannot go to like Dunkin' Donuts and use it. So one of the selling cases is that um, we have just one coupon and the, the, the use case keeps expanding. And also that this coupon is infinitely reusable, right? Because say when you, you use a coupon, uh, it, it, just, you, it can be only used once and that's it. But with our coupon, it can be infinitely, infinitely reused and it can, be, it can also be even traded on exchange. And also that for the merchants, right? Because if you think about from the merchant's perspective, uh, if they want to get themselves onto Groupon, they might have to pay extra for, for being on there because having a spot on Groupon, it's like, it's like advertisement, it's self-promotion, right? So oftentimes also in, in China, um, there's a lot of um, coupon platform, but if you want to be on there, you have to pay and you have to even just give the platform coupons for free, right? But in our case, when the merchants join us, uh, we are actually very thankful for them because in our case, when we're just starting out, we have no partners, we have no use cases, right? Uh, RWC is only powerful and useful when we have more and more partners joining us, right? So when a partner joins us, we will give them a percent of the total supply of these coupons. So it, it is an incentive for them to join because as they join and make this 
RWC token powerful, I think we want to reward them for joining us, right? Because we help each other out uh, as people join the ecosystem and provide use cases, we want to reward the early merchants who offer discounts with the coupon. Yeah, um, where do you see where do you see real world coupon say five years down the road? What's what's the goal with it? Uh, sure, it's really hard to imagine uh, what's going to happen, but like I said, I really believe in a decentralized team uh, working with blockchain projects. So it's the same with with my project. Um, we don't have like full time staff with you know healthcare benefit. Uh, we are scattered our, our team is scattered around the world we have people in australia people in china uh portugal ukraine and in the us and i think this decentralized team is really good because we can find use cases locally and also that we try to keep the team as open as possible so if people can can say they want to join we offer them to join as well and maybe i think we can evaluate the possibilities of opening up um, the project more and more because right now uh, we have to approve um, merchants who want to join um, our program and we reward them with like an allocation of the total supply. But I think maybe towards the end, we want to, we might have this online forum where people can just submit their use case and that's it. There is no re approval required. So in a way to make it more decentralized, anyone can join, anyone can offer discount use cases. I think that would be like the ideal end game mm -hmm. that I see right now. Because, Is there any, yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, no, no. Is there anything close to kind of this idea of coupons that you've seen out there? Or is this kind of, is this the only thing like this? Um, as far as I know, don't think there's a close competitor. I think what is interesting about blockchain is that people see this promising technology and they try to find creative ways to apply it to different areas. So yeah, this idea is not based off anyone else's, uh, something that I- You know, I, funny, uh, funny enough, you know, uh, I've, I've been a part of this uh, Rick and Morty uh, bribery thing. Have you seen it, the, the chat, the Rick and Morty tokens? Have you seen the Morty no. token? Okay, no. so Morty tokens are um, basically they're just they're just a, a, a they are just someone just made them up basically to play this game and the game that's being played is uh, people are sending these tokens back and forth to bribe each other to do things. Uh, so for example, today I've been bribed by uh, Sense Dot Chat by Crystal Rose at Sense Chat to tell everyone to. Uh, come use sense chat so on that note uh my friends if you're listening to this i have received a bribe and if you uh hit me up um direct message me or actually come in the eos podcast channel uh, on telegram and um i will give you a free coupon code for uh for sense chat so we can get you set up a free account so anyway uh but that being said uh, it's it Morty tokens seem to be a little bit of a prover to what you're saying here. It, it, if you added kind of some sort of a value or some sort of real world discount um, to this system of uh, paying people to do things or offering discounts and stuff like that, it does it does uh, seem to seem to catch on pretty quickly. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I I've been I have people. Um, that ask me to put stuff on the podcast all the time. And usually I just don't have the time to do it, but if there's some sort of two coupon or coins attached, um, you know, that always, that always, that always helps. So maybe, maybe Morty tokens coming full circle here are kind of a proof use case for, um, for real world coupon tokens, uh, you know? So. Yeah. I think one interesting fact about, or aspect about the RWC token is that, there is an upper ceiling for the token price because so far most use cases is a thousand <clears throat> RWC token can get you up to a hundred EOS, right? So in this case, it's 
10 RWC equals one EOS. So it wouldn't make sense for the RWC to be trading higher than that, right? So I think this project is really discouraging people to speculate because they know there's a actual ceiling on the price. It cannot go to the moon. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And then also that when we, it doesn't matter what's the trading price on the exchange for this RWC token, when you use it, right, you get exact value out of it, right? So it can, so I think it makes sense to, for the exchange listing price or trading price to be much lower. So whoever wants to use the coupon, they would buy it on the exchange for like very little value. And when they use it, they actually get a lot of the discount out of it. So I think that's one of the goal uh, for this uh, coupon is that first, uh, it really discourages people from like speculating it because it can, it can never go to the moon. And secondly, when you use this coupon, you know exactly how much value you get out of it. Because if you think about a lot of the cryptocurrencies, right? If you want to buy a Coke, a kind of Coke, right? If the currency value drops, you need to give a lot of the currency, you need to give a lot of coins to get one Coke, right? So, but it's not the case with the coupon. You know that when you give a thousand coupons, no matter where they're trading at, you know you're getting a hundred EOS deduction discount out of it. Cool. Well, I look forward to uh, following up with Real World Coupon. We will, you know, as you guys build and get things um, cracking um, or add partners, you can come back on the EOS podcast and tell the community where you're at. Um, yeah, is, oh, one very quick thing. Yeah, sorry about that. Too. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, uh, we're um, more, more towards the early phase of the project, but so far we are two partnerships and we will soon be listed on BTC Alpha. Uh, they are uh, a European exchange and will be listed there first. So okay. it's going to happen uh, mm -hmm. just this week or next week. So very soon. Great news. And, and I'm sure if, if there's crypto projects out there that are looking to partner and, and offer coupons or uh, things like that, then um, they, can, they can contact you, I'm sure, and do some creative things. Very cool. Well, we'll I, that's exciting to have an exchange listing coming up. We'll, we'll have to follow up with that for sure. So... Um, bigger picture EOS stuff, where do you see crypto and the EOS market itself and, and not the market, but the ecosystem maybe five years from now or 10 years from now? What do you think big picture kind of is, is about EOS and blockchain? Um, okay. So I think cryptocurrency started with Bitcoin and it really started from the idea that you know, this Bitcoin is not controlled by any government entity. And we do see, you know, the fiat money, like it's really mind boggling that policy makers, they're talking say, you know, 2% inflation per year. It basically says that they're trying to destroy the value of fiat by 2% a year, right? And the the supply keep inflating in the economy. So I think and also that with every financial crisis or every recession, the government tries to, you know, rescue the market and they try to oftentimes try to blow a bigger bubble to the economy and eventually it bursts. So I think at some point people will realize that fiat money may not be the way to go or, or unless the policymakers have to, you know, make a big change in between. I do see that. I really don't, uh, so far, I don't see cryptocurrency in five years being used as like a method of payment for, you know, paying for lunch or dinner. I don't really see that. But as a store of value, I do see that happening because it really takes like real energy or real electricity, electricity to mine Bitcoin. So there's a cost associated with Bitcoin and there's a finite supply. And it's really interesting to see where this experiment end up. So it can either go to zero or become very, very valuable. And I would, my guess is that it can be very, very valuable. So, I think 
it will likely be used as like a store of value in the future. But with payment, um, maybe with like stable coin, but not with Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I tend to agree with that. It, for I mean, for Bitcoin or for cryptocurrency to go to zero would take everyone abandoning the idea that uh, fiat currency is, you know, inflating and basically taxing you. If you hold fiat currency, you're taxing, not only are you getting taxed, but you're taking the chance that, uh, you know, that it will hyperinflate and your money will be worth nothing. So, uh, you know, the, when people say that crypto is going to zero, that would take everyone that believes that fiat is fundamentally flawed, abandoning that idea. And um, I don't see that happening. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know how someone could possibly get me to uh, get on board with the idea that fiat is actually the way to go. And that, uh, you know, all the things that I think economically about the problems with fiat are wrong. Um, I, I just, uh, I don't, I don't know. And, and, and maybe they could get just me, but I thought of getting everyone in the world to believe again in fiat is, is a long shot. I think this is kind of a, a one way train away from fiat at this point. So um, yeah, fiat, you know, crypto going to zero is, is almost a non-factor. Now, what I will say though, is like picking a, a blockchain or a crypto winner at this point is, is also such a long shot. I mean, we feel pretty comfortable with Bitcoin. Uh, a lot of us feel pretty comfortable with EOS but um but those are kind of first movers still or so early and the idea that you know you can be here and you could you know hold a bunch of eos and bitcoin and eth and five years from now bitcoin eos and eth may not even be around you know it may be something we didn't even think of you know facebook facebook coin is launching next week you know maybe maybe facebook coin just like everyone's like, Oh, I know Facebook boom. And they all start using Facebook coin. And, and then, you know, all this, <laughs> all these thoughts and hopes and dreams may be, may be crushed next week when Facebook, coin, you know, so uh, predicting that part of the future is, is, is tough, I think. But yeah, another part of me also think that, you know, Bitcoin is so dominant right now, but at the same time, it is the first ever mm -hmm. cryptocurrency, right? Like what if sometime down the road, there's like the perfect cryptocurrency that everyone wants that it makes Bitcoin obsolete, right? So mm -hmm. that might happen. So it's really hard to say like which one will win out, especially this is still the very early phase and people are still experimenting with different codes and different methods. But truthfully, um, my personal opinion, I think Facebook's global coin, it's not, it's not a, cryptocurrency i would say yeah it's it's a very strange concept that they're trying to create uh, it's like a stable coin but like tightly controlled <laughs> you know what it looks like i mean it just looks like i think in brandon bloomer is the one who kind of turned me on to this idea was that uh it, it's just a signal that facebook's trying to get into the payment um sector and so in this in in the west we have uh google pay and, and a lot of people are using Google Pay. Like I use Google Pay for some stuff. We got PayPal. Facebook just wants a piece of that pie. This this just you know one click payment type of thing. Um, I think that in in China you guys are probably using WeChat to pay for everything. Um, it seems that Facebook is trying to consolidate that. You know that yeah. So they're calling it blockchain, but really they just want a piece of this payments. This this uh, electronic payments is what it is. Uh, more than a more than a coin. So. Yeah. yeah, and my thought on Facebook's um, global coin is that it will help uh, help blockchain achieve mass adoption, or at least because you know people used to pay with you know cash or credit card, but with Facebook, right? People will have like a wallet, like Facebook wallet, and they'll be like, oh, global coin, right? So it's like introduction of to to the general public, like, okay, here is your digital wallet and here's your token and you know transact with it and when people get used to it and then maybe someday they're like okay this is not cryptocurrency i want cryptocurrency okay they go blockchain or they go like bitcoin or eos and i think this can help accelerate adoption for yeah sure. maybe well, I think. and it's it's crazy to think that um so 
with Bitcoin, every the big the big thing was immutable ledger, um, you know, proof of work, et cetera. But it wasn't this wasn't easy to use. Um, this year, you see more and more on the EOS blockchain, more and more projects that are abstracting away the blockchain. So it becomes almost uh, people don't know or care that they're using the blockchain. And it seems to me that however blockchain is pushed forward from this point on, the idea that um, privacy or immutability or these types of things really matter to the common person, I don't think they do. Um, you know, I think they're a nice benefit, but I think that uh, whoever makes it the prettiest and the easiest to use is going to get the adoption. So that's what's kind of crazy about global coin is that, uh, you know, Facebook has what, six billion users or something wild. You know, I don't know how many users they have, but something, you know, some outrageous amount of users that they're just instantly can have a billion users for this Facebook global coin. And, and and that that does matter a lot, you know. So we'll we'll see how that turns out. Yeah, but last time I checked, I think Facebook are losing users left and right. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. So this is this is one kind of their their. I think they're throwing a hail mary pass here. This is their their last big hurrah to see if they can pull something off to pivot a little bit. Because uh, yeah, there I deleted my Facebook account, so I'm a, I'm a proud hashtag delete Facebook. Um, so. Yeah, I think they are too. So. Yeah, I mean, also that if Facebook can do it, right? Like, that means Apple can probably do it and Google might be able to do it too. Then it'll be like all the tech giants have their own coin. Right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and then- And then to stick EOS in there too, okay? Yeah, <laughs> now, now you have EOS. The, the fun thing about EOS is that um, there is tokenomics involved that even though Apple, Facebook, Google are, giants and Amazon are giants. They don't necessarily understand the tokenomics involved with, uh, with how crypto actually works. So there's like a lot of really fun and sticky things that you can do with blockchain that they don't really, they're not well versed enough yet. I mean, it takes a long time to dig deep enough to know like the underlying power of blockchain and, and from Facebook's global coin, like it's, it's, you know, there, there's not that much sticky about it. Something like the voice, when people can earn every day, they use it. You're not going to get that on Facebook or where if you have quality content, you can make money. You're not going to get that on Facebook. So, um, and, and you, someone building that, I mean, that's a tough build because, uh, you know, it took bit shares and then steam it and all these iterations of things to find out how the incentives actually work. Um, so uh, voices is, is going to have a big edge there. So we'll see how they, how they, hopefully they, they got to come in with a splash. Honestly, they've got to do some crazy, work, right. bring some influence. Like <laughs> yeah. They got to bring yeah. some big influencers. Um, speaking of influencers, I keep Joe Rogan. I know you're listening to this. If, uh, if you're listening to this, you need to bring Dan Larimer onto that, onto the, uh, Joe Rogan podcast and interview him because that dude will blow your mind. Um, I keep tweeting at Joe Rogan, trying to get him to invite Dan Larimer onto his show. So, uh, we're going to make that happen. And if it does happen someday, I'm going to try to take credit for it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah. So, um, cool. Well, where is the, um, best place for people to find um, Moran, EOS Writer, uh, Real World Coupon? Where, where would you like people to find you? Yeah, Moran was, we actually have been very low key. So we rather not, I can't say that, that we rather not be found, but you know, if projects needs help with anything China related, just, you know how to find me on Telegram. Just ask around. Ask Brandon Parker. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and oh, and yeah. So for real world coupon, uh, just visit our website www.realworldcoupon.com, and you can see the project and all the information is on there. And if you want to visit EOS Writer, it's www.eoswriter.io. And from there, you can visit the Chinese site. We're super excited about this partnership. 
Fantastic. Yeah, this is a really exciting partnership. Uh, this is the EOS podcast by EOSwriter.io. And um, I've got a proxy, Mr. Happy Money Proxy. I've interviewed most of the block producers. Um, and I vote for the block producers that are transparent, building together and empowering the EOS community. So if you are looking for a proxy, Mr. Happy Money Proxy on my end. Um, Peter, as we wind down here, do you got any final thoughts for the EOS community or anything else that you'd like to touch on? No, just move forward, touch forward. We're gonna do so well, yeah. Yeah, move forward. Well, I'm we are- with voice and everything. Yeah, we're moving forward here together. Um, I'll give a couple shout outs. Hybrid.games, Scott, the, um, the sound producer for these shows, or sound engineer, is also building a crazy game that involves your senses and the blockchain and gaming. So Hybrid.games, check it out. Sense.chat, Crystal Rose, shout out. And if you want a Sense Chat account, a free one, hit me up in the EOS podcast Telegram and I will get you a free Sense.chat account. Um, and eosstudios.io forward slash web. Um, EOS Studio has ma been making some really cool uh, developer tools. So, uh, They're Rose, and, yeah, Rose ran in Telegram. Do you know anything about EOS Studio, Peter? Um, by any chance? Uh, yeah. We know Phil. Uh huh. Yeah, they're doing great work. Yeah, that's a, they, and they just released a, a few more updates. So um, check out EOS Studio uh, if you're looking for some developer tools. So um, that's the show today, my EOS podcast friends. Cheers from the EOS podcast by the EOS Rider. Cheers, Peter. Thank you, Brandon. The money is not the prime asset in life. Time is the 